You know we love spooky things. This is why we fell in love with Michigan-based Lynn B. Designs. When I popped the pumpkin spice all the things wax melt into my burner, my home was filled with a delicious buttery scent. Plus, there's the wide variety of a gorgeous nail polishes with themes like Hocus Pocus and Pleasant Peninsula. All products are vegan and cruelty-free, and you can find monthly sales on Facebook and Instagram at Lynn B. Designs. Head to lynnbdesigns.store today. Again, that's L-Y-N-B-designs.store. We love them. We love you. It's great nail polish. It's the best I've ever used. Thanks. Michiganders can be a superstitious bunch. We find all sorts of reasons to explain the world around us, sometimes pulling from science, sometimes tradition, and sometimes from our imaginations. What happens when we can't readily explain our experiences, and what happens when a ghost story gets out of hand? Do these legends stem entirely from fantasy, or are people seeing things no one can truly explain? I'm Krista K. Coburn. And I'm Kay Gray, and welcome to Haunted Mitten. And welcome to season four of the show. That's wild. <laughs> uh, we can't believe we're here. <laughs> After getting our start during the lockdown, losing our recording space, and then ramping up the live shows and appearances, we cannot believe we're on season four of Haunted Mitten. We couldn't do it without you. I mean, we probably would be doing it, even if it was just us listening to ourselves. But you folks make it a thousand times better. So thank you for hanging on with us, hanging out with us, and supporting us. Woo, thank you. Woo, thanks. Thanks, people. We sprinkled this into various other topics here on HM, but it's time we gave the beautiful and haunting cemeteries of Michigan their time in the spotlight. Or ghost light. We'll be bouncing all over the Mitten State for this episode, so let's get this show on the road. Really? Those are the kinds of jokes we're making now? The four yeah. season, baby. If they don't know who I am by now. They'll never get it. It's true. That's her thing. I want that known. <laughs> <laughs> I make my own jokes. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> so our first stop is actually fairly close to us, and we've wandered through on a quiet, sunny afternoon once or twice. The butler or William Ganong. Sure. I believe that's how we decided it was pronounced. Yeah, that's however you want. We could be completely wrong on that, but hey. Uh, the cemetery is located in Westland, across the street from Burning Bush Ministries, whose billboard, and you probably also, pass regularly on the highway, and it never fails to rid me out just a little bit. It's like... I don't like it. I have like a 12-year-old sense of humor, and I do snicker a little bit, <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah, I do too. <laughs> inf- infamous names. <laughs> Apologize to any of our listeners who go there, but... No, I don't. Uh, you know. <laughs> uh, the cemetery is old halfway unkempt i i would say it's not completely grown over uh and it's it's easy to make your way around in just a few minutes it's it's a bitty one a video from youtube posted by the great outdoors in 2014 says quote the local cemetery was donated by a local farmer it's a local so twice. we've got a lot of yep. digging to do quote just on that the alone. cemetery yeah, was donated it. by a local farmer in 1832 yeah. from a portion of his property <laughs> um, to find be a grave. for burials wonderful website it is home to 350 deceased and is now closed to new burials among those buried are 25 of the ganong family several world war one and two veterans one veteran of the american mexican war and numerous freemasons Albert Ganong, who perished in Libby Prison at age 17, is among the veterans buried there. The cemetery is now owned by Wayne County. So Find a Grave and his own tombstone say that Albert was serving as a private in Company K of the 24th Michigan Infantry during the Civil War. He was captured by the Confederates and sent to Libby Prison in Virginia, where he died, as we said. Um, Remember how Michigan was part of the Union in the Civil War? Not everyone seems to. Not anymore. I am more than happy to remind you. <laughs> <laughs> the, quote, local farmer the YouTube video references was William Ganong himself, according to Wikipedia and Find a Grave. He and his wife moved to Michigan from Steuben County, New York. I assume. Steuben? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Steuben. Uh, where they had a go at farming near Clintonville. 
He and his family moved back to New York for a time, but ended up back in Michigan, where he set aside a piece of land for a cemetery. And there you go. William Gannon in Inkster. There are many places. There, every single place seems to list the cemetery as being in a different city. Really? So it's yeah, that's true. Inkster or Westland. I or- remember it was like right on the border. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty close. But Wayne County owns it. It's Wayne County. Takes, maintains it. Yeah. It's a county cemetery. Yeah. County park, I guess, at this point. Some kind of public land. Yeah. Uh, So that's a very simple and easy story for all the sightings and happenings reported from the small cemetery. So that's the background we're given. But you might remember us talking about white ladies on several episodes in past seasons. Those apparitions that appear as white or light blue. Usually women that appear along roadsides and often get into vehicles who stop for them. They're a universal ghostly phenomenon, and William Gannon Cemetery has one of its very own. Of course it does. I think a white they all lady. do. Yes, Sorry, true. I think they all do. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> a white lady has been seen on the street in front of the cemetery, solid enough that she causes cars to swerve to avoid hitting her. Possibly related to this, uh, Gundella, a local witch to the area whom we've cited before, found actual remains scattered about the cemetery of what appeared to be a blonde woman. Her scalp... Actual scalp, mm-hmm. Oof. Uh, bones, pieces of a white satin dress, and a broken up coffin were visible in the cemetery. The police were called, of course, and it was postulated that a recent bad rainstorm had washed away the dirt covering the woman's casket, or else animals had gotten in and dug up the deceased. Gross. According to the YouTube video that we'll be posting the link to in the show notes, quote, not long after Gundela's visit and discovery, a driver was killed when he veered off the road just outside the cemetery on what is now called the Bad Curve. Paranormal investigators still report hearing screams in the cemetery at night. The cemetery is also said to be the site of ritualistic activity, as said to be reported by the Detroit News in 2000 after a kettle with bones, feathers, and charms uh, was found as well as pentagrams painted on tombstones. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was a pretty big curve, I remember. I don't know if it was, like, the bad curve, but, you know, it was... I don't... I was, mean, I, I wrote in here... That was a big one. It's, I, I, yeah. Yeah, I didn't find it particularly... It was big. I mean, it was big and it was pronounced. I could see um, going around there at night, maybe when you've had a few... <laughs> oh, okay. We have to introduce a... <laughs> or smoked a few. Um, <laughs> have to introduce but yeah. substances. Yeah, things may change in bad weather. I mean, we were there on a bright, sunny yeah, day. Yeah, and it's, I was like, it was fine. Okay, but so I the could road see. Curved. You know, that's Michigan. That's just... <laughs> yeah, bad bad weather. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, the road itself was trash. Yeah, yeah. It was, but again, that's Michigan. That yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this is probably stupid teenagers being idiots. Yeah, that's not ritualistic activity. I don't one. I don't know what ritualistic activity means. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know what it would look from my end, like if I were doing something, but I would be doing that in my home. Well, and like, sure, you could get yeah. something spiritual out of being in a like. I love to hang out in cemeteries, and I find them to be like super spiritual. But one, Satanism as the mass public knows it doesn't exist. Uh, those who are Satanists are usually just looking for attention, looking for attention or really love to just get high and eat food like they don't don't do anything. Um, but also that's nobody would. None of that speaks to not really any kind of pagan or polytheistic or whatever. Feathers and charms could be like, um. Oh, like root work, yeah, or something like into that spectrum. But I'm not that familiar with it, so and 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 this seems like an painting. odd place for it. But spray painting for sure. That's... Spray painting a bunch of shit on tombstones yeah, that's... is the work of assholes, not ritualists. Yeah, that's just <laughs> graffiti. We know in better. the bad way. We know better. We're basically like Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts. Leave a place better than you found it. Yeah. Anyway. Enough ranting. (laughs) Gundela wrote about these incidents in her book, Michigan Haunts and Hauntings, along with the story of a man local to the area. Quote, late one night, Tony Pointer saw the figure of a woman dressed in white crossing the road in front of the cemetery. He swerved to avoid hitting her and she vanished in front of his eyes. 
A year later, he was again passing the cemetery. This time, it was just at dusk on a foggy evening in late October. The lady in white was standing in the graveyard next to a large monument. Nearby stood a second figure, a man dressed in what looked like a gray uniform. Tony stopped his car to get a better look at them, and they both seemed to dissolve in the fog. So not only do we have a white lady, but a gray man. Exciting. That makes you just think soldier. As soon as I hear, like, oh yeah, gray. <laughs> Which, I mean, it makes sense for that cemetery of True. Just yeah. 25 soldiers of some of, from something, from some war. Yeah, buried there, and I would say that twenty five would make up a decent chunk of that tiny cemetery. Yeah, it was so small. small. (laughs) Yeah, I don't think you could add too many people to it. No, maybe if you really tried. Yeah, (laughs) squeeze them in there. Squeeze them and shove them in. It's fine. (laughs) Do the New Orleans way. Just push them over. Yeah, it's fine. They've been there long enough. Yeah, they're just dust. But, (laughs) but that's not all that's been witnessed in and around the cemetery. People have claimed to see odd mists, glowing eyes, and heard screaming and the sound of rattling chains. I feel like that's pretty stereotypical. I'm like, did somebody just put on a Halloween CD? Yeah, I'm like, I don't even want to say that's typical. It's like stereotypical. Yeah. (laughs) We've crossed into new territory. So cliche. Come on, (laughs) cemetery. Michigan's own professional weirdo, John E.L. Tenney, great guy, uh, he investigated the site, leaving a recorder on a grave marked Lizzie overnight. He found that the recorder had been turned off not long after he left and was turned back on just before he arrived to pick it up. He had also taken pictures of the cemetery with the help of a mysterious and helpful black cat and learned that the woman Lizzie had possibly been misnamed on the stone. The obituary that Tenny found was for a Beth, not Lizzie, and he found, with the help of the cat, that on the tombstone had been written, I am Beth. He brings flowers to her grave every year and claims that since starting this, no one has seen the woman in white. Giant shrug as to whether or not that last part is true, but it is harder to find any reports of her from more recent years. Everything yeah. was like back in the day. Yeah. I, Tenny's, I think, was the most recent yeah. that I found. And I've heard him um, speak and he he's re- told that story. And I think he talked about it on his podcast. And I think so, too. If you hear him speak, you'll probably hear the story. And you can hear him speak on What's Up Weirdo. Yeah, he <laughs> came a, back to podcast. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a good, stupid podcast. I love it so much. Yeah, his first podcast, I think he talks about this story. Yeah, and that one's yeah. a more like lecture style. Yeah. It's basically like his lectures. Yeah, which recorded. are totally worth going to, by the way. If, a thousand percent. If anyone hasn't gone, they're I, absolutely worth going to. I invited him and uh, Jessica from What's Up Weirdo to, to have a chat with us, and Jessica said she was down. So Awesome. And then Tenny liked the tweet, and I assume that's Tenny speak for sure. Yeah. Maybe. So now, What's Up Weirdo, I'm holding you to that. Yeah. Bring Toad. I'll Tenny bring has himself. liked me- He always likes my Halloween costumes, and I, I feel like that's high praise. <laughs> I don't get many likes on my pictures on Twitter. <laughs> and like every time I do a costume, like he likes it because I tend to do like like weirder, ghostly, older. Like I did a silent film actress yeah. a couple years ago. Yeah, that one was awesome. I'm so happy with how that turned out. That was so good. Wow, that was just our first cemetery. <laughs> there are so many more to explore, like Blood Cemetery. Love that name. Love it. Just off Jason Road in Langsburg, I think is how you pronounce that. I think so. Okay. Blood Cemetery was supposedly founded for the Blood family that, of course, has spooky legends surrounding it. When someone or something is called Blood, you can bet people are going to think it's scary. Oh, yeah. People are going to jump on that. I'm going to come up with all kinds of weird stories about (laughs) Blood. Blood. Blood Cemetery. That's like an 80s movie. I I need to look up where that surname comes from. Like, oh, was their ancestor a surgeon? Barber? I don't know. Or is it just like a... A more common spelling of like some other languages. Yes, some other, some other last thing. name that does not mean blood. Or we find out in like Old Norse it means something totally different. Yeah, I come across that a lot. You're like, yeah, it just means like, just means like sheep. You're like what? Yeah. <laughs> no, but your last name's blood. Yeah, I come across that a lot with names like that. It's like, wait, what? Oh, oh, it meant something totally different. Okay, got it. <laughs> this makes way more sense yeah. than your last name being Killer. <laughs> According to WFMK and a few other paranormal websites we'll list in the notes, the last of the Blood family was none other than Dr. Blood. No way. If you have a name like Blood, you obviously need to become a doctor. Doctor, Pre- Preferably a surgeon. Yeah. <laughs> um, barber. Barber, <laughs> administrator, an insane asylum. You know, the standards. Yeah. 
He lived in Blood House, for reals. I can't do this. An old manor on the family's property. He apparently, emphasis on, uh, shot his wife, Mrs. Blood. Mrs. Blood. And then hacked her body to pieces with an axe, obviously. With an axe. Sorry. (laughs) Either fearing arrest or out of guilt, he hanged himself on a large tree in the cemetery. Because of course he did. Uh, Supposedly, both the doctor and Mrs. Blood haunt their family graveyard. Another ending to the tale is that Dr. Blood will try to kill anyone who comes to the cemetery on Halloween. Because of course he does. Guess who's got to go to Blood Cemetery (laughs) on Halloween? I don't actually know where Langsburg is. Apparently near Lansing. Yeah, it's not too far from here, actually. Sweet. I'll go. I have have Halloween off. I do. I have Halloween off as well. Yeah. I always do. Because it's a Monday. (laughs) I always just request it off. I'm like, this is a holiday for me. Why isn't it a holiday for the whole nation? Come on, people. Come on, Biden. (laughs) Federal holiday. (laughs) Halloween. Absolutely. You won't give us a full student loan cancellation, so you can at least, at least give us the consolation prize of Halloween being a national holiday. Thousand percent. I think that's, it's not the best compromise, but I'll take it. Yep. Anyway, I don't have student loans, so <laughs> shut up. <laughs> On that note, please donate to our Patreon. <laughs> One dollar a month gets you a bunch of cool stuff and you like help us pay for things that I can't pay for because I do have student loans. <clears throat> anyway, what? Blood Cemetery. Paranormal Lansing by uh, Bray and Duchesne includes a story that they say was featured in the DeWitt Bath Review on October 26, 2003. A man identifying himself as Drew reported that his friend Mark, a friend of a friend of a friend, yep, told him that he had seen an old man wandering the cemetery as of lost. Another friend said that he had seen the ghost of an old man carrying a torso. Drew visited Blood Cemetery with friends Dan and JC. JC claimed to have seen a woman in a red dress with no arms come at him. Drew had tried to trick his friends by hanging a dress on a post. Thinking this is what J.C. saw, they went to check it out, but the dress was gone. The kids stole the cemetery sign for a laugh because children, kids are assholes. (laughs) However, the sign disappeared from where they had put it, and upon returning to the cemetery, there it was, hanging as, as if it had never been taken. Years later, Drew returned with different friends, and they found, quote, a large piece of glass about six feet long and about two feet deep. And encased in it were a dozen long stem roses embedded in the center. They heard a shotgun blast and ran back to the car to find that the car had been shot and windows shattered. Years later, Drew visited on a motorcycle with his girlfriend who took a few pictures. While riding away, they got into a crash and she was badly injured. Yeah, make of that of what you will. So again, it's a really bad 80s horror film. Yeah. Oh my God, we could totally turn this into something. I've already turned a few of the... Our stories into short stories. <laughs> we could do it. That would be, oh, that'd be a fun play or something. Yeah, it really would. <laughs> we'll, we'll get in talks with people. <laughs> <laughs> so the blog, A Bewitching Guide to Halloween, has another take on the, quote, teens in a graveyard story. Quote, one Halloween night, a bunch of teens visited the cemetery. They spotted a ghostly figure moving among the gravestones. This spooked them so much they decided to make a quick exit. But as they were leaving, one boy decided to dare another to go into the old blood mansion. Of course, he took the dare. Of course he did. Teenager, it's obviously. A boring story without it. Yeah. After about an hour, the boy had not come out. His friends were terrified to go in, so they drove to the nearest police station. The sheriff on duty said, don't you know old Dr. Blood lives there? He doesn't like anyone trespassing on his property. When they arrived back at the old mansion, it was a blaze. The police called the fire department, who tried to put out the flames, but the house burned to the ground. After the fire was out, they sifted through the rubble and found the charred remains of the missing teen boy. His hands and feet were bound, and a shotgun and bloody axe were found beside him. Okay. In the ruins. Somehow. After they had been burned to the ground. (laughs) Yep. Okay. Such an inferno, the fire department couldn't get the flames. (laughs) I mean, like like I said, the, the blood name invites stories. Yes. Especially if it's Blood Cemetery. My God, that's just begging for it. Oh, I know. The authors Bray and Duchesne of Paranormal Lansing report visiting as well and getting EVPs and orbs in their photos, which they assume were likely just moisture in the air. Shrug. 
They received the following response from the Clinton County Historical Society regarding the blood family. Quote, I checked the occupations of all bloods from 1850 to 1950 in the U.S. Census reports, and none of them were listed as physicians or doctors. So there's that. Missed opportunity, if you ask me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Why was none of their children none of their children pushed into that? Yeah. You will be Dr. Blood. Maybe that that's why. Oh, maybe you won't be Dr. Blood because people hate our family anyway. Yeah, so they're like, no, these are the these are the jobs you can't take because your name is Blood. You can't be a doctor, can't be a dentist. Nothing with any kind of metal, medical degree. Yep. Can't be a barber. And you can't be a mortician. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, them's the rules. Last name's blood. <laughs> I didn't make them. Life made them. Yep. Uh, so yeah, to me, clearly this sounds like an urban legend run amok. Oh, but, it is know. written yeah. straight up story style fiction. Yeah, that absolutely. 80s horror movie vibe. All of all of these stories. <laughs> all of all of the varied stories. But uh, you know, people have experienced something there uh so maybe there there is a blood still wandering the grounds i mean i I don't think they're armless ladies or guys carrying torsos but i mean there there are so many stories about this cemetery (laughs) so i don't know i don't know if it's people psyching themselves out if there's something going on and then the tales are coming from that i don't know i don't know well i have like the blanket belief that like all cemeteries are haunted in some fashion, for whatever whatever definition you give haunted, just mm-hmm. from the very fact that they, A, contain a bunch of dead people, um, and B, contain a lot of grief from surrounding family and friends of said dead people. Yeah, a lot of energy there. Yeah, and are just chock full of this kind of either sacred energy from those that, like, respect cemeteries or, like, fear from those who are afraid of cemeteries or death. Mm-hmm. And just just pile that all up into a section of ground. Yeah. And I guarantee you something's going to happen. I have read from some psychics that cemeteries are the least haunted places. Because if you were a spirit, why would you want to hang around your dead body? Why wouldn't you go like <laughs> visit your family or, you know, things like that? Yeah. Um, but, I mean, we've covered cemeteries on here. We know that lots of strange things and unusual things happen in them. So, mm-hmm. Big old shrug. Big old <laughs> shrug for Blood Cemetery. I'll still go on Halloween night, though. It'll be fun. Yeah. Let's see if I get chased by either a ghost or just, like, an unhappy groundskeeper. Yeah, I wonder if this was one where, yeah, people kind of try to protect it. I can't remember. I've read a few that are like that, mm, that say, know. you know, be careful. There's a a caretaker or someone who lives nearby or it's part of their property. Right. Yeah. And we've mentioned that a few times on here as well. Oh, yeah. Watch out for shotguns. <laughs> I mean, it's fall and you're in Michigan, so watch out for shotguns anyway, but. It's true. Uh, <laughs> anyway, let's take a trip to the coast. Woo! Grand Haven, to be exact. Love me some Grand Haven. Yeah, I have family there. Excellent. It's a gorgeous little touristy town, complete with beach and historic lighthouse. And before you ask, that's probably the one lighthouse in Michigan that isn't haunted. Disappointing. We know. Yeah. (laughs) But believe me, Lake Forest Cemetery more than makes up for what the lighthouse lacks. The old cemetery was located where Central Park is now. Bodies were moved in 1883 to the current location, except the ones found while constructing Central Park. They always leave bodies behind. (laughs) Always. Every time. It happens, I guess. Sorry, dead people. Articles from the Grand Haven Tribune from the early 20th century confirm this for us. It is believed some bodies may still remain buried beneath Central Park, which in itself is pretty creepy. Beware of people in San Francisco, too. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. They still find bodies every once in a great while. Yeah. Anytime a body or a cemetery has been moved, bodies get left behind. Yes. I don't think I've read a cemetery yet that that hasn't happened. No, this is just part of the course. Yep. From WZZM 13 News, quote, Lake Forest Cemetery has been in existence since 1873. Many of the founding fathers of Grand Haven are buried there. Also buried in the cemetery are many people who suffered crime-related deaths, as well as thousands of unidentified people buried on top of each other in a mass grave. Fun times. (laughs) Love it. 
Also, maybe? that that outgrew its space pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah, that happens too. It's beautiful out there, so I'm not surprised people like flocked to that area when they oh, were settling yeah. the region. Oh, me either. The most notorious specter in Lake Forest is known as the Blue Man. He is not part of the group. It's fine. <laughs> make that connection <laughs> i was just like oh a white lady a gray man and now a blue man nope he's nope. part of them they're gonna form their own musical group. the afterlife is very colorful <laughs> i hope so uh, according to ambrose hammond's book ghosts and legends of michigan's west coast which is fantastic by the way high school students in the 1960s talked about seeing a mysterious blue light quote that seemingly came out of nowhere end quote it was seen quote dancing around in the surrounding woods of the cemetery unquote in the 1970s, students were still talking about the light. It's been around a long time. Yeah. Uh, but it became known as the Blue Light of Duncan's Woods, which borders the cemetery. Members of the Duncan family were buried near the woods, and kids claimed that the blue light came from those tombstones. In the 1980s, the name changed to the Blue Man of Lake Forest Cemetery. And he is seen in the vicinity of Ferry Hill, also called Founders Hill, because the town's founders are buried there. Obviously. No way. <laughs> Never would have guessed. It is described as a, quote, hazy blue color standing near the Reverend William F. William M. Ferry's grave. Some speculate that it is the spirit of the Reverend looking over the city he helped settle. Others say his spirit is angry and restless, because of course they do, because his tomb had been severely vandalized in the past. And those are two very separate emotions. So it's interesting to note that different people have felt some wildly different energies from whatever resides in Lake Forest. Another giant truck. Yep. <laughs> Speaking of polar opposites, let's talk about the stairway to hell, also known as the stairway to heaven. Yay! <laughs> I love local stories so much. And that's not sarcasm. Like, I genuinely love that oh, yeah. people from different generations have just wildly different names for things and wildly yeah. different stories for, for the influenced exact by same different phenomena. Yeah, influenced by different parts of the culture. <clears throat> yeah. Legend says that once you reach the top of the uneven wooden stairs that lead to the top of Fairy Hill, you will be shown, shown your death. Does it involve falling downstairs? I should get a look at the stairs, but I think I'd be okay. <laughs> <laughs> Legend also says that for those buried in Lake Forest Cemetery, their souls must climb these stairs. If they see a white light at the top, they go on to heaven. But if they see no light, they must turn around and walk back down the stairs to hell. Immediately. Immediately. Paranormal investigations have revealed very little on Fairy Hill, however. Even psychics reported only feeling sadness, which might just be the disappointment of either seeing a boring death or being told you're going to hell. Really, it's just a very confusing staircase. Yeah. I feel anyone sees a staircase, it's clearly the staircase to hell or heaven. Correct. Depending on if you like the song or not. <laughs> <laughs> staircase to hell is interesting, though, because this one does, I mean, you have to go up first. Yes. And then it's like, I walked all this way just to be told I got to walk all the way back down and go to hell. Yeah. <laughs> it's like insult to injury. Like, just don't climb the stairs. Problem no. solved. And then I guess you stay a ghost in the cemetery forever? I don't know. There's no option. Like, yeah. Do you do this like upon your death you're transported to the stairs or like can you do it just like now? Because <laughs> I feel like if you get a vision of your death, then yeah, you're doing it while you're alive. Right. So then you just, if you're going to but hell, once... you just die on that that moment. You just die. Hmm. 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 Stairway. I see some flaws. Yeah. Hmm. There's some flaws in this plan. <laughs> Loopholes. Ah, uh, legend loopholes. Uh -huh. Don't climb the stairs. Problem solved. Got it. Be a ghost there forever. Got it. Moving on. <laughs> but it's reported that the founding families um, of the area are buried here. So perhaps something left over from their lives or energies might be feeding these odd stairs. Yeah. Yeah. Whatwhenhow.com writes, quote, The West Michigan Ghost Hunter Society, WMGHS, has periodically visited Reverend Ferry's gravesite on Ferry Hill from 2000 to 2004. Investigations have led WMGHS to believe that Ferry Hill in itself holds much paranormal activity. This includes orbs, mists, black shadows, voices, and extreme temperature and geomagnetic variances. End quote. 
So who knows? You know, as we said, lots of conflicting reports from this area. Who knows? Yeah. And I feel like some of these seem sort of small, I guess. Yeah. Like, miss, okay, well, it's Michigan. You're in a cemetery. You're close to Lake Michigan. There's going to be temperature missed. variances. Yeah. yeah. I remember that was, when you first moved here, that was one of the things you commented on. Like, why is there just like random fog? Yeah. Like, I don't know. The temperature changes. The air changes. You that's, get fog. I don't know. That's weird. <laughs> it's weird coming from a desert. We don't have fog. It's true. And we have, especially around here, we have a higher water table. So. Yeah. At the Potter's Field section of the cemetery, however, one psychic mentioned in Hammond's book felt something following him, and he firmly told it that it had to stay there and could not go with him. He also described what he saw as, quote, dark oil slicks darting around in the air. Local researchers estimate that there are over a thousand bodies buried there, some of which, some of which washed up on the Lake Michigan shore. That in itself is a wild fact. And that's going to happen when you live by the lake shore. Yeah. That <laughs> happens a lot in Lake Superior. I think we talked about that in the the shipwrecks. I think we did episode. too. Yeah. Bodies just washing up on the shore. Yeah. And yeah, it hadn't occurred to me that, yeah, Lake Michigan is like the deadliest lake. So yeah. probably a lot of bodies washing up on shore. Right. Unfortunately. So yeah, that, that thousand is not necessarily from the town's folk. It's... Right. Well, like, we got a lot yeah. of dead sailors too. <laughs> Yeah, oh, and people maybe were out swimming or fishing and got caught in the current or, yep. you know, whatever. But, yeah, yeah, that continues to happen, though I'm, I'm assuming not as, as large a scale. <laughs> I assume not, just based but, on us not hearing about cause I was surprised about the, bodies. the size of the potter's field. I was like, oh, yeah, drowned people. <laughs> oh, yeah, Good that's point. right. <laughs> Good point. Oh, uh, yeah, I forgot about them. Yep. Yeah. Um, and there could even be, because we're still going with this cemetery. I know. There could even be a, a quote, phantom gateway in the cemetery. Sure, why not? Um, that's not something I've really come across before. Several reports from the 1970s talk about going through a gate in the cemetery and then not being able to find it again when they visited later. A man and his son were biking through the cemetery and decided to move on but couldn't find an exit. They traveled along the boundary fence and eventually found a gate out to Lake Avenue and took it. But the next time he and his sons were in the area, the gate wasn't there. They couldn't find any entrance on Lake Avenue at all. And this story comes to us from 99 WFMK. Love them. Yep. Shout out. <laughs> Someone that really likes to collect folklore and I. Yes. I agree. So I'm good. with that person. We should be friends. Hey, <laughs> 99 WFMK. It is up. You don't know who we are. With so many sightings and wild stories, it's no wonder the cemetery is a beacon to ghost enthusiasts. There's even a free tour every October hosted by Amber Rose Hammond, uh, author of Ghosts and Legends of Michigan's West Coast, uh, which we've used extensively in this episode and just enjoy in general. Yeah, it's, it's the best source I found for West Michigan because mm -hmm. there just isn't as much out there. Yeah. And Jeanette Wyden, Wyden, I apologize who is in charge of local history and genealogy for definitely don't know how to say that name. Loud it? Perhaps. The, fr the French wants to, in me wants Lutie? to say Luti, but I doubt I'm sure Lutie. it's not pronounced that way. <laughs> uh, for Loud it District Library in Grand Haven that details what we talked about tonight. And it looks like they're still doing the tour as of last year, last year being 2021. So here's hoping you can witness this place for yourself soon, and we can too, because that sounds like a ton of fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go visit my family. Go walk in a cemetery. It'd be great. I actually haven't been to Grand Haven in several years. Yeah, me either. I've never spent proper time there. Mm -hmm. I would like to spend some proper time, possibly in a cemetery. Yeah. This sounds like a pretty big one, pretty interesting one. Yeah. Well... That's all the time we have for this episode, but believe me when I say that we have so many more cemeteries to talk about. Oh my goodness, so many cemeteries. Um, this will this will definitely be an ongoing series, similar oh, yeah. to the college universities one. Um, as we we will travel and discover more and more. Um, Michigan's covered in cemeteries. Everywhere's covered in cemeteries. Covered, yeah. There's Absolutely covered. way more here than I ever thought there could be, though. Oh yeah, you're driving down any random road, cemetery. Yeah, there's like the two on Plymouth Road within a mile of each other. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so until then, we will be back in two weeks with another exciting and spooky episode. You can also catch us on social media at Haunted Mitten. 
And you can find me also on those social medias, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, fun times. I am at Krista K. Coburn, C-R-Y-S-T-A-K-C-O-B-U-R-N. And K is at K. Gray Writes, K, just the letter, G-R-A-Y-W-R-I-T-E-S. Or check out our website, hauntedmitten.com. Or our merch! Merch! Hauntedmitten.store? Woo! Uh, We've got shirts. We've got stickers. Hell, we have sliders if you really want to rep our gear. I might get some because I do want some slip-on shoes. (laughs) Just to, like, putz around the yard. Yeah. (laughs) You know? Then you could you could you could report back if they're comfortable enough to yeah to be worth it to, yeah to keep them in the store. <laughs> I just love that we have those. Yeah, of all I, the random things to sell. Yeah, I mostly made them because I was I was amused. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah. So go buy our stuff. I can tell you, we can tell you for certain that our shirts are super comfy, super comfy. They're so good. And we have mugs now and water bottles, stickers. I gotta get a mug. Yes, you do. I know for my collection. Uh, we will also have a table um, at the upcoming Mid Michigan Mid Michigan Paracon, so come see us November sixth. Yay! Yay! And for those who have saw us at other events this this summer this fall, thank you, thank, thank you, you so much for stopping by. I had a blast talking to everybody. Thank you, thank you. Yes, we love meeting you guys. We love hearing your stories. Absolutely, I just... I heard some amazing ones at Ghost Arama. Yes, that that's was great. Awesome. Uh, so let's see. Anything else? Um, yeah, you should totally join our Patreon. Yeah, as we mentioned earlier, pay my bills. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, not yet. It's not even close. To that. No, not even close. <laughs> Actually, it pays one bill. It pays our website. Yep, which is pretty great. Yep, it's we're kind of self sufficient. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so one dollar a month gets you lots of goodies, including live shows, spooky stories, and access to our Discord. If you're a Discord person, come chat with us. Um, and it's just a dollar. So come on, join in. Join us. Um, and you help pay for us to keep doing this. Do it. Which we enjoy. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Do it. <laughs> okay. One dollar. <laughs> I think that actually is it. I'm trying to think. I don't think there's anything else. Um, I think so. Yeah. We'll see you next time. And as always, happy haunting. <laughs>